All right. Let's jump in. Uh, so my name is Peter Hill, and I'm responsible for the end user computing and productivity applications businesses here at AWS. Uh, for a little bit of context, I joined Amazon, I guess, way back in 1997. And uh, since that time, started by owning our internal IT, I guess including our mail, DNS, and all the other systems that helped our uh, website at that point. Then I went into the retail website uh, within our software teams. I uh, jumped into our distributed system engineering teams uh, that were really focused around helping our retail website scale. From there, I helped launch our Kindle e-readers and tablet devices, and then jumped on to AWS early on. During that time, I always loved building out tools that makes our developers and the rest of our teams more effective and more efficient. Now, I'm actually pretty excited that we get to do that full time. Customers generally tell us that the cloud is it's easy to use, it's flexible, it's cost effective, it's reliable, it's scalable, it's highly performant, uh, it's secure. The focus of this talk is going to be how to discuss how to bring those same benefits to end user computing devices. I'm extremely pleased to, this morning to welcome with me BJ Loxmi, uh, who's a principal architect from Biogen, who's here to share her insights on how to use workspaces uh, to help uh, build their end user computing solutions for her organization. So as I mentioned a moment ago, our teams deliver productivity applications and end user computing solutions. Throughout the day, we're going to focus on end user computing, but I thought it'd be helpful to discuss the full scope of our offerings. In the end user computing space, we have Workspaces, which is a cloud desktop solution. We have WorkDocs, which is cloud storage. We have AppStream that delivers application streaming. And in the productivity service space, we have Chime, which is a, which is a conferencing and chat solution. Sorry, they're out of order. We have Connect, which is a call center service. We have Alexa for Business, which is an intelligent office assistant. And we have WorkMail, which is cloud email. We built these services working with tens of thousands of customers, running hundreds of thousands of end user and productivity workloads on AWS. We have customers covering every major vertical segment of, of the enterprise. I do want to call out a couple, though. In healthcare and life sciences, we have Johnson & Johnson and Pfizer. Financial services, we have Capital One, Bridgewater, Wellington Capital Management. In media entertainment, we have Endemol Shine and Condé Nast. In manufacturing, we have GE and Siemens. Insurance, we have Guardian Life, Mutual of Omaha. Independent software vendors, we have Aviva, SolidWorks, SolidWorks, MathWorks, and Gerber. And in the public sector, we have government agencies, academic institutions, and nonprofits, all using Amazon end user computing solutions and productivity services. Our customers often start with a few specific projects before expanding into more core enterprise scenarios, or replacing legacy VDI or mobile management solutions. For example, Johnson & Johnson initially started out using Amazon Workspaces to help with their Bring Your Own Device initiative. And since that time, they've expanded to provide a secure, controlled desktop for all their consultants, contractors, and suppliers who needed access to internal J&J systems. Siemens came to us with a need to stream a specific application called Siemens NX. They use that for their customer trial and demo program, as well as to help train new users on the NX platform. We're going to do a pretty cool demo. Morali's going to show us that in, uh, towards the end. Over the past five years, the end user computing and productivity application teams delivered over 250 new significant capabilities. There's a bunch more that we don't talk about, but these are the ones that uh, we wanted to call out, that we wanted to highlight. To give you some context on the acceleration of these features, in 2016, we launched 40. In 2017, we launched 72. And in 2018, we launched 102 capabilities. We now support solutions ranging from SAP GUI on AppStream, Alexa for Business in your conference room, and streaming complex, complex CAD CAM applications on your Chromebook. Some of the highlights we'd want to call out from 2018 are, first one is up, Amazon Chime Call Me. Call Me is a brand new audio feature that makes it more convenient for you to join Chime meetings. You can now, whether you're working from home or on the go, enter a phone number into the Chime web application, and then Chime will call you as the meeting's about to start, so you'll never be late. So it's now easier to join any Chime meeting, whether you have Chime application installed on that device or not. We also launched the AppStream native client. The native client allows you to take advantage of more hardware peripherals in, in hardware devices, for example, dual monitors or USB peripherals. This is great for multitasking, graphic design tasks, 
or development use cases where you need more screen real estate or you want to take advantage of something, say, as like a USB mouse. It all supports keyboard shortcuts such as Alt-Tab, clipboard shortcuts, copy-paste functions, and general function keys. We also launched the Amazon Connect Lex chatbot. This lets you invoke Amazon Lex chatbot from any Amazon Connect region in the world. It has improved integration for press and say type of functionalities. We've optimized its Lex audio capabilities for our 8 kilohertz telephony. We've also integrated custom markup through SSML. So this is great for brands who want their brand name set in a very specific way. It also allows you to program in natural breaths or pauses into any responses. We also launched the Alexa for Business room booking. This allows you to reserve conference rooms directly from Alexa devices in a conference room, allowing you to skip the complicated room booking tools. So you can say something as natural as, Alexa, is this room free? Or Alexa, is this room free at four? To reserve, it's as simple as Alexa, reserve this room at two. Or if you walk into the room that's empty but happens to be reserved, you can say, Alexa, who booked this room? And to see if you're going to get kicked out, which happens a lot where we work. In all these spaces, we're just starting to scratch the surface. We're definitely not stopping here, and our focus is to keep innovating for the long term. So I'm not sure if you can read this. If you can't, I'll just read it out to you. In the first one, it's, we just finished our final app migration to AWS. We're now all in the cloud. The second is, can you approve this order for our 5,000 non-prem BDI deployments? So customers describe this type of scenario to us a lot. Going in all in on AWS means that different things to different customers. Customers tell us that they love the benefits of the cloud, such as being, you know, I mentioned a moment ago, easy to use, flexible, cost-effective, reliable, scalable, high-performance, secure. And we want to make moving laptops, desktops, and workstations part of that common all-in strategy. Toyota Racing Development is actually a really interesting example. TRD created mission-critical applications to help improve precision, consistency, and speed in their NASCAR vehicle designs. And you'll be able to see them running up and down the streets here, I think, tomorrow. TRD started there, and that worked well. Now they're starting to use the desktop infrastructure as well. TRD tells us that they're seeing benefits, including improved security, better scalability and flexibility, simpler IT operations since workspaces is fully managed, and they like the pay-as-you-go model. We hear consistently from our customers that work has significantly changed over the last 15 years. They tell us that the globalization of the economy, the shift towards more flexible and remote work environments, and the acceleration of the global merger and acquisition activity have resulted in a workforce that needs to be effective and efficient, working from anywhere, anytime, with anyone. 43% of employees work remotely at least part-time in 2017, and this number is just increasing. 50% of millennials factor in the ability to work remotely in their employment decisions, and I'd only expect that to keep going up. Customers say that this creates an inherent tension for IT. They need to secure the content and data on all these remote devices, many of which are outside of the corporate firewall. And commonly, they need to extend networks to these remote devices via VPN, for example, to enable workers to access to access corporate resources. Well, at the same time, businesses want you to be more agile and flexible. Well, we all know the cost of security breaches continues to rise. They tell us that there's even more pressure on teams to find ways to enable these requirements, greater access, greater flexibility, and greater security. And customers tell us that, unfortunately, the traditional approaches to support end users in this new world are falling short. What they found was that VDI showed promise. Though building out global VDI solutions, including hardware and network designs, is a significantly hard problem. BYOD strategies introduce security and support risks that often are not acceptable or too expensive for IT. And there are security risks associated with mingling personal and corporate applications on devices with access to protected networks and critical corporate data. IT administrators and users both struggle to get the right software installed on these devices and keep everything up to date. They also tell us that to ensure security and control, IT teams typically implement a patchwork of technology for MFA, VPN, and SSO. But even with these tools, data leakage is still a significant problem, since data is often stored locally on these employee devices. 
And these devices walk out the front door with your employees every night. And still, the end users say they often have difficulty accessing and sharing work content in a way that meets security and access control requirements. Many customers tell us that they've, tri they've tried traditional VPN and on-prem infrastructure solutions. But with these traditional v VDI solutions, IT administrators tell us they're forced to guess annual demand and buy hardware for peak needs. And the difficulty forecasting hardware typically results in overbuy. And deployments can take weeks or months to complete. And ongoing maintenance and infrastructure management, it's a real hard problem. And they say they're often caught by surprise when new projects or groups of employees come online and need to purchase or upgrade hardware. At Amazon in the early days, we had new projects coming online all the time, and we were always caught by surprise uh, by these types of projects. And so it was, it was always that rush at the last moment. And employees spend a lot of time trying to figure out what software they need to install to get their job done. As software specific to the role, often needs to be downloaded and installed manually. As a result of this, IT teams spend a lot of time and expense implementing accessibility and security solutions, and we hear often that there's still big gaps here. Our desktop and app streaming solutions and cloud storage solutions leave the work, they leverage the work that AWS has already done to solve many of these real hard problems. And customers tell us that there's six things improve when they move their end user computing workloads to the cloud. They get a better end user experience. You can choose the capacity and performance to match an end user's specific needs. You can even select instances optimized for things like graphics, design, or engineering. Administrators, or users if you allow them, can reconfigure instances on their own, on the fly. For example, a workspace user can add a bigger CPU or more memory with a click in the configuration tool, and then reboot and have that available to them. You get a better economic model. Customers tell us that there's a mini aha moment when they realize they can just turn off hardware that they're not using and not pay for it. The, the idea here, or the strategy, should be you purchase the minimum amount of hardware that you need to get that job done, because if you spend any more, if you get any more hardware, you're just wasting money. You should only pay for the performance you need when you need it. And when it's time to add more users or quickly test a brand new business initiative, <coughs> workspace customers tell us that they're excited. This doesn't mean a new hardware purchase cycle, and it can happen with a click or a reboot. With legacy VDI solutions, there's a big upfront price tag for on-prem infrastructure just to get started. And builders can be more innovative. AWS started as a core set of services for developers. And as we've grown, we've definitely taken on more requirements. We have not left that core DNA behind. In our end user computing solutions, we built extensive SDKs and open APIs that software companies, enterprises, and developers of any sort can integrate with to build their own solutions using end user computing services as building blocks, or primitives as we call them. You can improve security and control. One of the key differences is in end user computing is that your company's critical data never resides on a client device. Your critical data is not going home every night on hundreds or thousands of laptops. And you can integrate end user computing services with your existing tools for directory, authentication, and management, simplifying that process. You get greater elasticity and scale. You can get started with a single user and not get stuck trying to figure out how to maximize the usage of your on-prem hardware. And as is typical for AWS solutions, you can dynamically scale capacity up and down with users or with needs. And you get to take advantage of Amazon's global footprint. And user computing services are constantly expanding to more regions across the globe and taking advantage of AWS's global scale so users' data and applications are where they are. These capabilities mean that you can improve how your teams work. One of the things that surprises new users in, in that is that apps and content are always available and on, so they can securely pick up their work anywhere on any device. With these services, they can start their day at the office, switch to a Chromebook or an iPad, a mobile device while on the go, and connect again through a PC to wrap up, and their content and their work and projects are seamlessly and securely follow them and they, as they change throughout the day. 
For example, at Bridgewater, who is presenting here one of our workspace breakout sessions, they tell us that users have a choice when selecting their work computing environment, and that users are choosing workspaces because they say the performance is great and that they like the flexibility. They say that it's changing the way they work and they wouldn't go back. And when they choose, and when they choose workspaces, Bridgewater has automated a lot of the onboarding process. The applications that users need to get their job done, they come pre-installed. And the end-to-end -end new hire procurement process completes in just a few minutes. And things get easier for IT as well. IT administrators can easily select hardware specifications for their users' needs without having to purchase, configure, or maintain new PCs. Our end-user computing customers often use our SDK and APIs to automate different portions of their onboarding cases or easily get a customer environment when you have a very specific need. With any of these solutions, you can quickly onboard users and teams just with a few clicks. With a fully managed service, there's no inventory for you to maintain. And it integrates with your existing directory, MFA, and SSO solutions. For example, Pfizer deploys workspaces to support their BYOD efforts in remote teams. They've automated much of the onboarding process, so now a manager can have a brand new system for deploy ready in just a few minutes. This device will carry all access control and group policy permissions associated with that employee. Pfizer has taken the automation even further, where they can now even identify idle workspaces in, say, like a vacation case, and turn off that computer so they're not paying for the compute that, when the person's not using it. As I mentioned a moment ago, AWS started as a, as a group of services, or it actually started as a core set of services for builders. And as we've grown, we've taken on a lot of new use cases. But we've not left that core DNA behind. For example, at Vertifor, they built their managed DAS offering for the insurance industry on top of workspaces, which is far more than just rebranding and reskinning. Using open APIs and SDKs, they built a custom offering for that industry that also provides backup and disaster recovery and helps their customers meet difficult compliance challenges. So we think about end-user computing services as cloud desktops with workspaces, cloud storage with Amazon WorkDocs, and application streaming with AppStream. So let's dive in with Amazon Workspaces. Workspaces handles the heavy lifting managing user hardware at scale. With Amazon Workspaces, we're able to leverage and take advantage of AWS's global infrastructure and Workspaces is built on top of solutions that have already solved many of the hard problems, such as e EC2, EBS, or Direct Connect. And those solutions have many of the characteristics you really want to see in a global end user computing infrastructure. As a customer, you can take advantage of that scale whether you're connecting a single workspace, 1,000 workspaces, 10,000 workspaces, or you're, or you're helping support a single office or offices around the globe. Amazon Workspaces is secure and helps you meet your compliance requirements, including HIPAA eligible, GDPR ready, and PCI compliant. With Workspaces, your organization's data is not sent or stored on end user devices. If a device gets lost or stolen, your data wasn't on it, so the risk is limited. Instead, the PC over IP remote protocol used by Workspaces provides a familiar desktop experience that your users are accustomed to while the critical data remains in the AWS cloud or on your on-prem infrastructure, if that's where you choose for it to be. You pay only for the workspaces that you use on either a monthly or an hourly basis. So you can deliver desktops to your users without building out expensive on-prem infrastructure to meet peak demand. Amazon Workspaces is a managed service, so it's simple for you to deploy and manage. Once a user selects a bundle, we handle the configuration and the deployment. Each workspace is domain joined, it can integrate with your existing directory environments. Even if it's on-prem, your group policies, for example, are gonna work just fine. We've also made it easy for you to bring your own license into workspaces, so you can leverage your existing investments. All of your existing Windows and Linux administrative tools, such as SCCM, are gonna just work. And because Workspaces is a cloud desktop, you have no on-premises infrastructure to manage, which means no VDI hardware and less software for you to manage. It's scaled and performant. When you deploy Amazon Workspaces for your organization, you're giving each team member their own full-featured, high-performance desktop in the cloud. They can choose either Linux or Windows desktop experience. 
Your users can pick a desktop bundle with the hardware and productivity software they need to get their jobs done, or this can be automated on their behalf. So a graphic designer can choose a GPU-enabled workspace. And a developer can deploy a performance workspace bundle running Linux that includes their favorite IDE or whatever development tools that they feel are appropriate. And if workers want to test something out or their needs change, they can reconfigure their workspaces with a simple reboot. And they have an entirely new machine with a new CPU memory and storage that fits their needs. We found that meeting customer needs is critical because if customers don't love the devices, they're just not going to use them. And your teams can also access the workspace from wherever they happen to be in using the device of their choice. Many workspace customers tell us this feature is invaluable. For example, they can start their day at work. They can say, happen to fly out to Las Vegas for a corporate event, connect via their iPad, and while they're at the conference and at home, they can, or at the hotel, they can connect back up via their laptop. In all their work, and as they transition, it's, their work is exactly where it was when they left off. That's actually a pretty good game changer. When we first launched workspaces, for context, I run our bicycle commute to work, and I carry a laptop, which is a bit cumbersome. And so moving actually to workspaces, we just now carry a Jamalto key, which replaced that laptop. So it makes the commute a lot easier. And so that was pretty much a game changer for me. Customers use workspaces in all sorts of ways. As part of the modernization effort, we see customers using workspaces to replace their legacy BDI. They say the benefits are more cost-effective, flexible, and scalable model. This is exactly what Yamaha Motorsports is now doing. They started using workspaces in 2016 to support their BYOD effort. Now, with an addition of graphics instances, their design teams are using workspaces as well. And Yamaha is gradually retiring their entire on-premises VDI deployment in favor of workspaces. And many other customers have global distributed teams that they need to support as well. So in addition to their expanding BYOD efforts. VJ will be speaking more about this when she discusses Biogen's use of workspaces in just a few minutes. Project work is where many of our customers get started with workspace because it's fast and easy to onboard new users, scale up and down quickly based on their needs, in addition to simple integration with your existing IT environment. For example, Endemol Shine, they're a Dutch media company in 38 countries. They produce television shows such as The Biggest Loser, Black Mirror, and MasterChef. They give each video crew workspaces to access content and applications from their project site, wherever that happens to be. And instead of traveling with the expensive and cumbersome video production laptops, they just carry their MFA solution. Data from the shoot is stored in the AWS cloud. And using this approach, they reduce their capital expenses by over 70%. They reduce the cost of laptops by over 30%. Workspaces are also used to solve a number of compliance and security challenges. Bridgewater Associates, they use Amazon Workspace to create highly controlled environments for privileged users that's separate and distinct from their standard users, and a third isolated group for external consultants who need access to define Bridgewater to internal Bridgewater resources. Bridgewater's here this week, actually talking in a chalk talk on workspaces for highly regulated industries. It's definitely worth checking out. So I spoke about the ways we build workspace to help empower users, simplify IT, and enable builders. Since we launched the service, our team has been working hard to continue to innovate and build new capabilities for customers. And I want to talk about some of the highlights from 2018. We introduced two brand new powerful workspace bundles this year in Graphics Pro and Power Pro. These new bundles give developers and graphic designers more powerful cloud desktop options to be productive in compute and graphic intensive environments. Our strategy on the bundles ensure you never get stuck waiting for multi-year hardware refresh cycles on your devices. And we continue to add these new bundles and upgrade our existing bundles with the newest capabilities so your users always have the latest and greatest powerful and high performance experience. The devices they have today get better year over year. We also added several new regions for workspaces, including Montreal, Seoul, and Brazil. Workspaces is now in 11 regions and counting. So you can leverage a global footprint of AWS for your computing requirements. And we introduced several new self-service management capabilities, which opens up a bunch of management tasks directly to your users and do things like reboot or rebuild their workspace. You can convert the workspace from monthly to hourly billing, or resize the compute and storage needs on demand. 
Many of our enterprise customers are excited about this feature to empower users to optimize their own experience and free up IT and help desks from these cumbersome types of tasks. I already mentioned GDPR readiness, though I want to call out IP access controls. IP access controls further deepens our group policy capabilities and give more fine-grained controls for managing trusted groups, locations, and individuals who can access workspaces. When we talk to Amazon Workspace customers, we hear consistently that while they value their Windows 7 and Windows 10 workspaces, they want more. They want developers and engineering teams, their developer and engineering teams, they're looking for Linux workspaces. Those teams want Linux to support their development, their labs, their test environments. Beyond these use cases, customers also want Linux to support a basic productivity environment where you don't need access to native Windows applications. At Amazon, a lot of our developers are absolutely have started using these Linux workspaces and use them throughout the day. They're actually definitely worth checking out. Now I'd like to introduce Vijay Lakshmi. She's a principal architect to talk about how Biogen uses workspaces for her environment. Thanks, Vijay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, it's Vijay Lakshmi, and I'm from Biogen, as Peter mentioned. So Biogen is a multinational company and headquartered in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Specializes in discovery, development, and delivery of therapies that is focused on the treatment of neurodegenerative diseases. So Biogen journey of using Amazon workspaces in the cloud is a very typical enterprise journey of using end user computing in the cloud. As Peter mentioned, we also have very different workforces. We have employees, remote employees, contractors, and managed service providers, all having a different type of needs and requirements but we were providing a very sim same solution with very limited visibility in user experience, user performance, security, and cost. So our executives asked uh, the IT team to look into it and enhance Biogen cloud strategy into the end user computing and find out a flexible solution to provide a better user experience to our users but also have a control to the IT to understand the usage patterns, performance, security, and cost. So finally, we said, okay, we, we understand, we got the orders, we look into it, and the team started talking to the end users who are actually currently working the VDI, using VDI solution, and there are multiple use cases we found. Our biggest focus was international audience, because we have many countries where we have workforces. Some are mobile, some are field people. So international audience was the biggest focus for us. And they were finding a limited help, print, limited print functionality, connectivity, VPN connectivity. That was a bigger, I would say, productivity drainage on their side. We also have field who are nurses, who are going into the field and collecting the data. And they have to carry three pieces. They have to carry phone, they have to carry iPad, and laptop. So it's, it's looking at like, I'm born to be a mobile workforce, but I'm actually taking three devices with me. So we looked into it, and the team was formed. And it took us only 70 days. When I say 70 is, um, sorry, it's malfunctioning. Yeah. 70, 70 calendar days to start the process com coming up to the selection. The team looked at the different vendors. We found out what our selection criteria should be, and we looked at technical capabilities. The solution should meet Biogen security certifications, should also address the pricing. Because we are going into the cloud, it has to provide the fine-grained detail level about the pricing and with minimum risk. So the team decided and looked at the POC. We found out the solution, and 
This is the experience that our users actually get. We conducted a pilot among 25 countries across four regions, 89 users for two weeks. And this is the experience that these users came to us. And some of them, they are not very tech savvy people. They are field people. They are employees and they are remote employees. And their statements, their feedback was so important for us to hear because they are the users. They will be the impacted with the solution that we are putting in place. It's not just because the cost. And if they are liking it, with meeting all our selection criteria, that was the biggest aha moment for us. Then it took us 30 calendar days to productionalize. And reason for taking that additional 30 days is one thing, when you are going into a production, Amazon Workspaces team has a scheduled interval. So you can submit your image and they can provision the data plane but that goes on a specific schedule. So if you miss that schedule, you have to wait for the another schedule. That was one thing. The second piece was the network. Biogen was already in the, bio, in the AWS cloud with the direct connect connectivity, with the full automation. We used Turbot for the full automation and orchestration. So we didn't have to wait for that connectivity. However, we use managed service providers. So things to watch out for when you are taking your journey, ensure your managed service provider gives you a appropriate bandwidth. Because the workspaces is being delivered on the public internet. So you have to make sure that the managed service provider provides the enough bandwidth for people to actually get the experience. You have to look, look into your contracts. The second piece, was the network and desktop telemetering tool. We use Liquidware agent, which actually helps understand where could be the bottleneck. Is it the network? Is it the application? Where is the poor performance actually happening? Then we didn't create a new operation team. We had to just retrain our existing operation team, like how to troubleshoot, how to service this, create a knowledge base for those people. And also, the whole IT service management, the ticketing system to integrate the self-provisioning so people can understand how to actually request a desktop as a service. The other piece is the Amazon Workspace console is very basic. When you are dealing with so many workspace, workforce types and managed service providers, you want to put them into a different directories. And reason for that was, because you could have a different policy for one managed service provider and you could have a different policy for the second managed service provider. Second, you can also understand, you have a fine grain detail level into who is using what, why this type of works, workforce is using only 20%, why this workforce is using 40%. So that type of segregation is very important. But in order to, when you do that, you need a Uber view, how do you get that? So you have to write your own console and every, con every enterprise is different, okay? So maybe you have a different way of KPIs and I may have a different way of, but Amazon actually have released the Amazon Workspaces SDK. So you can use those SDKs to create your dashboard. And I will tell you, it's so simple that our engineer took two days. Of course, that was rough draft. Then within one week, we were able to actually clear our, our whole draft. So our journey didn't stop here. We are productionalized. We have thousands of workspaces running. The next step is to look into the optimization and understanding how are people using the workspaces, what type of applications they are running on. Because the next journey that we would like to take is if the user is using only one or two apps, and you have massive number of people only using one or two apps, then you may want to actually use AppStream rather than DAS. And that is why we are actually currently evaluating AppStream. And as Peter mentioned, that Amazon journey doesn't stop, our journey doesn't stop, we are learning at every angle and making a course correction. Thank you.
Thanks, VJ. So let's switch our gears and let's start talking about cloud storage with Amazon WorkDocs. Amazon WorkDocs is a secure, easy to use cloud storage service that lets you store content, files, and documents across teams and collaborate on projects. WorkDocs is a secure content store where you own and control your own files. You can specify which AWS region stores use your files to help maintain data locality requirements. WorkDocs is HIPAA eligible, PCI compliant, meets ISO compliance requirements, and in addition, the files on WorkDocs are encrypted in transit and at rest. You can manage access with your existing IT, such as Active Directory, and take advantage of security groups, SSO, and MFA, and track user and file activities in near real time. Users can use the WorkDocs client, the mobile applications, WorkDocs Drive, or third-party applications that are OAuth 2.0 compliant to manage their files. In WorkDocs, integrates easily with Workspaces and AppStream, so your content is available from any environment, on any device, anywhere. Amazon WorkDocs comes with an extensive SDK that helps you customize your, in, your collaboration and management capabilities into your solutions and applications. Using administrative API actions, you can integrate WorkDocs with your existing solutions, such as auditing, antivirus, e-discovery, Using API actions, third-party applications can programmatically manage files, commenting, notifications, and sharing. The Amazon WorkDocs SDK is part of the AWS SDK. It integrates with other AWS services. You can easily take advantage of the power for, of AWS for security, monitoring, business logic, analytics, storage, artificial intelligence even, and app development. You can get started with just a few minutes with the AWS tools you're already familiar with. There are a lot of ways for your teams to use WorkDocs to be more productive. Amazon WorkDocs helps keep all your content stored in one place, except accessible from anywhere, and secure. Condé Nast is using WorkDocs as a secure, global, globally available content repository. Condé Nast users span multiple continents and generate all sorts of content for their magazine. With WorkDocs, the content generated for the magazine is easily stored and secured and can be accessed by Condé Nast publications and editorial teams anywhere. Customers like Gateway Engineers and Signet Maritime Corporation are retiring legacy on-prem network file shares to allow access to control from anywhere. These customers say it vastly improves their user productivity and reduces their overall operating costs. There's an extensive SDK that you integrate, in, directly integrate with to build value-add solutions on top of WorkDocs. This is something that Xerox is doing for LA County. By integrating with the WorkDocs SDKs, LA County users can send and receive fax communications that are automatically stored in the user's WorkDocs folder. This approach is helping streamline communications and collaboration between LA County employees and various contractors and suppliers. It's also improving their ability to track and audit communications as their projects proceed. We've highlighted a bunch of the really new capabilities for WorkDocs in 2018, but I do want to call out some of the highlights. WorkDocs Drive. This lets, you, this lets you access many of the capabilities of Amazon WorkDocs directly from workspaces, Windows or Mac OS X, including sharing files, making files as favorites, locking and unlocking files for editing, and searching for files. And WorkDocs Drive enables synchronized on-demand access from all the files from any device and they're not stored locally. Those are all stored on the store. WorkDocs Smart Search it lets you query across content, comments, and document labels, in addition to searching for files and folders by name. IP filtering gives you the ability to control the IP address from which your WorkDocs site can be accessed. Using IP address ACLs, you can define and manage groups of trusted IP addresses and only permit users to access WorkDocs site when they're connected to a trusted network, like corporate networks, or their Amazon Workspaces environment. You get data retention policies. They let you set rules around retaining a version of your users' files and folders for recovery and compliance. We also launched embeddable document previews that allow developers to build richer content management applications by natively, by natively embedding document previews in their application for over 35 file types. Users of these applications will no longer have to leave the application to proofread or preview content. 
We also launched end-to-end -end collaboration experiences. With access to shared with me resources, developers no longer are limited to building applications targeting a single user. Developers can now build applications and functions that cover complete end-to-end -end collaboration workflow scenarios. Also, the activity feed now allows developers to build applications ranging from analytics, anomaly detection, like data loss, data loss protection solutions, to administrative applications for policy enforcement. Improvements in activity feed API simplifies the consumption of these activities to build richer experiences. Halliburton is a great example of a customer using the latest capabilities in both WorkDocs and workspaces. Halliburton, with a, along with other corporations in the open source community, they've created the Open Earth community, if you haven't heard about that. This is, an, this is an open community of scientists, engineers, and software developers in the oil and gas industry. They're committed to providing and sharing a software platform that lowers the cost and accelerates the pace of innovation across that industry. By using WorkDocs and workspaces together, the content development teams can be as productive in the field as they are in their standard work environment. The developers, are, the developers are provisioned workspaces for the development environment, and the coding and tools that they need to get their job done are already installed. So teams and contributors don't have to waste time configuring their environment. Everything's there and ready to go as soon as they are. And by integrating with WorkDocs, the code repositories can be accessed both inside and outside of the workspace environment on any device, so teams can be productive on whatever device they're on, wherever they happen to be. And single sign-on and common integrations with Halliburton's existing Active Directory environment make it easy and fast to access the content and start building. They create dedicated security groups based on user role types with fine-grained controls, so they can control which developer has access to what specific content or what projects. So now let's, talk, let's start talking about application streaming with AppStream. We build AppStream to provide customers a new way to deliver applications. AppStream is a fully managed application streaming service that delivers desktop applications to any computer without rewriting them. As with all of our end user computing services, AppStream delivers your application with the benefits of AWS. Because your application and data are not stored on the user's computers, AppStream helps improve security for those applications. They're streamed as encrypted pixels, very similar to workspaces. And you can access data from within your network or outside. And AppStream runs on AWS, so you can benefit from the data center network architecture built for the most security-sensitive organizations. Each user accesses the same version of the application. You centrally manage your applications on AppStream and can stop managing installations and updates on each user's computer. AppStream integrates with your existing Active Directory, network, cloud storage, and file shares, so your users can access resources that they need securely. You don't need to worry about managing application installations and updates across each computer. And your users don't need, need to use another username or password because it's federation with their sign-in with SAML 2.0 services. Finally, AppStream, deliver, AppStream delivers a great user experience. Each user's application are highly responsive because they're running on a streaming instance op, they're, Sorry, they're running on streamed instance op, instances optimized for their use cases. You can automatically scale your application. Sorry, throat's starting to clear up. Start that one again. You can auto-scale your application streaming sessions to any number of users in the world. It doesn't matter what computer they're using. And you don't need to operate legacy application virtual technology like Windows servers, network appliances, or streaming gateways. As you scale, you pay as you go, and only for what you need. We've seen customers using AppStream for many things, but here are the few of the use cases that stand out. In the business application space, we see enterprises like Core Expert by Teamwork, an AWS advanced consulting partner, simplify their application management with AppStream. After completing an acquisition, they needed to quickly provide every user secure access to an, AS to an SAP environment through a Windows client. However, half the company was running Macs. And IT didn't want to manage multiple application distributions across different computers. It was complicated. And to integrate those two environments would have taken months. And so they tried AppStream, and in two days, they had a fully functioning deployment for every user. Other customers like Avari, a geospatial information system consulting company, used AppStream to work without workstations. 
GIS consultants are always on the road and rarely in the office. But they're increasingly using GPU-based GPU applications to capture, store, manipulate, analyze, manage, and present spatial or geographic data in real time. These applications require powerful workstations, and, there's ex and they're expensive to deploy and maintain. So they tried AppStream, and AppStream lets them access the GIS apps they need on any computer, and it costs 70% less than deploying workstations to their users. And we see many software vendors using AppStream to accelerate their application adoption with instant demos, trials, workshops, and full SaaS offerings built around the desktop applications on AppStream. Siemens and SolidWorks use AppStream to shorten their sales cycles to deliver instant demos and trials of their applications. MathWorks, Disti, and Aviva set up workshops in hours. For these software vendors, each take days or weeks for the customers to start using applications. They had to manage application downloads, licensing costs, in some cases, acquire and provision custom test hardware. Now customers can simply open a browser and test their applications. Software vendors like Multiview, Gerber Technologies, CompuWare, and BizDesign reach new customer segments by building SaaS offerings built around their desktop applications on AppStream. For Multiview, the decision was simple. They could rebuild from scratch or reuse with AppStream. Rebuilding meant years of development work, millions in R&D, and multiple unknowns. A high-risk project, it really was. Rebuilding an entire desktop application with the web, which meant really changing everything. AppStream meant no rewrite, no upfront costs, and no unknowns. Definitely the lower risk option of those two. So they tried AppStream and quickly deployed their app and built an entire SaaS offering on AWS. It was finished in months, not years. Also want to mention that we've seen universities such as Cornell use AppStream to provide students access to the apps they need to learn. For example, Cornell uses AppStream to deliver SolidWorks to its engineering students. Traditionally, students and professors had to reserve computer labs for applications like SolidWorks, and there's not always enough room in, for the labs and students. And Cornell's in Ithaca, so if you've tried to travel around there in the winter, it's not always easy to get to. So Cornell tried AppStream. Now students can access what they need to learn from their computers in their rooms, wherever they happen to be, whether it's Mac, Chromebook, or PC. So every few, you, every few weeks, we launch new features or customer requests. We continue to listen to our customers to guide, their new services, to guide our new service capabilities. We've increased user productivity and enabled additional workflows by adding persistent application settings and letting users use multiple monitors in the USB devices. Your users can use their apps as they normally would and quickly pick up from where they left off. Our customers are deploying AppStream in the AWS regions closest to their users to give them the best streaming experience possible. And we recently added Singapore, Sydney, and Frankfurt. To simplify the global deployments, we enabled customers to share their images between their accounts and copy them to other regions so they don't have to rebuild them. We added default application settings and added native cloud storage integrations so that users have their company-specific settings and data available when they launch their apps. And finally, we made it simpler for our customers to build with CloudFormation templates, custom branding, and extensive APIs for resource management and streaming access. These features take care of the heavy lifting builders had to do in the past and helps them focus on building new solutions with AppStream. Siemens, with their NX computer-aided design software, is one example of a customer building with AppStream. They use their APIs to integrate their desktop application with a custom web portal. With AppStream, Siemens is able to provide their software through a browser while still delivering the rich user experience required. Siemens trusts AppStream to deliver their free trial experience of their premier computer-aided design software to customers who haven't tried to use it before. Raleigh will now walk us through a trial experience they built to showcase how you can integrate with AppStream within your web page. Integrating AppStream with their web page lets you control the experience your users see while delivering a rich user experience of your Windows software. With AppStream, users don't need to download, install, configure anything to get started. Hey, Marlon. Thanks for doing this for us. Glad to be here. Thank you. As you're getting set up, can you tell us more about the Siemens NX application? Absolutely. So Siemens NX is a high-end computer-aided design and manufacturing software that is used for uh, basically designing the products that we use on a regular basis, things like jet engines, airplanes, cars, and things like your iPhone and other devices like that are most likely designed using Siemens NX. And so companies are using these to design medical implants and other things. 
<coughs> and it's uh, used for basically everyday use. Can you tell us what's typically used to build something like this? Sure. So typically when a company wants to deploy Siemens NX to their users, they have to provision a high-end workstation, which is something like it has a Xeon CPU, 16 gig of RAM, and high-end GPU like an NVIDIA Quadro or an AMD Fire Pro. And these can usually cost over $4,000, and you have to capitalize them uh, over three to five years, irrespective of when the user is using it. So when the user goes home for the night, you're still paying for it despite no actual utilization of that device. And it has to be imaged, repaired, patched, and it's not portable. If the engineer wants to go to a, new, uh, go to a meeting, he can't take it with him. He would have to have like an engineering ultrabook or something that's really heavy and not portable. So tell us, how does that compare to this device? So what I'm actually doing the demo on today is a Chromebook. Uh, it's just a standard off-the-shelf Chromebook that I bought off of Amazon. Uh, and it's uh, very low power. It doesn't have a discrete GPU. Oops. Uh, it doesn't have a discrete GPU. I think we went up a slide. Uh, and my cell phone most likely has more horsepower out than it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Get back to your stuff. Uh, and it's a super portable device. So if an engineer wants to go to a meeting, it's, it's super easy to carry around with them. And because everything is streaming, there's nothing actually lost should something happen to the device. All right, before I mess up the rest of the slides, I'll, I'll let you know with the demo. All right, thank you. Uh, so, uh, as uh, I mentioned, the Chromebook uh, has nothing actually running on it. So, oh, let me flip to the demo. There you go. Uh, so, what I'm going to showcase is the Siemens NX trial. Uh, and Siemens has integrated this into their product page for prospective new customers who aren't using it. Uh, but the cool thing here is that what's running on this Chromebook is really just the Chrome browser. What I have open right now is an incognito tab. And there's nothing actually running on this device other than the Chrome browser. I didn't install and configure anything. There were no plugins or anything like that to be downloaded before this demo. And you guys actually, after this, can go and check out the Siemens NX trial if you're in this space and want to go play with this yourself. There's nothing to download and install. So as you can see on the screen here, this is integrated fully into the Siemens product page. There's nothing here that says AppStream. The customer doesn't have to configure anything within their AWS account. It's super easy for them to get started testing Siemens NX. So if I scroll down here, all I, uh, Siemens is just requesting some basic contact information, and then the user can get started. Let me go ahead and do that. It's sort of awkward typing with everybody looking. So I hit submit, it sends it off. This helps them uh, gather basically contact information so that they can have the sales team later reach out to me and say, hey, how's your experience? Are you ready to deploy Siemens NX within your environment? And shortly it'll give me a URL, and there it is. So I can click it, and then it'll start loading. So what's interesting here is Siemens has integrated this with a uh, guided flow as well. So on the right side there is the trial navigator, which shows you how to work through their software. Uh, and the experience there was a little bit different because I already had a session going. But let me flip back to where it's pre-warmed. Uh, so here, there's a guided workflow on the right side there. So it's uh, super convenient for anybody who doesn't have any experience with Siemens NX to get started and start learning about this software. So as I mentioned earlier, Siemens NX requires a high-end GPU and requires a lot of CPU and memory. So the instance that AppStream is using right now has that. It has an AMD Fire Pro GPU which has uh, enough video RAM for the renderings that I'm going to show, has an Intel Xeon CPU, and it has uh, the, enough RAM to run the demo that I'm going to show. But what's really cool about this is it's purely AWS model for uh, the cloud economics. So when this is running, uh, Siemens has chose to use what we call an on-demand fleet. So Siemens is only really paying for this when I'm running it. When I'm not using it, there's no, uh, there's no charge for the high-end GPU instance that I'm using here. And so as I can show you, what I have here is uh, a skull model, which is to show uh, like a medical implants company, a company that's designing medical implants using a high fidelity rendering of someone's skull for whatever reason, maybe a cochlear implant or just some other uh, shunt or something that's needed. But I can use this just like I would if I had an engineering workstation. So I can set the transparency, I can rotate this thing just like I would if I were actually sitting at, oh, it's not what I wanted. Uh, I can uh, rotate this thing just like if I were sitting at my engineering workstation. And again, this is running on just a standard 
off-the-shelf Chromebook. There's no special configuration, no plugins, nothing, just the Chrome browser. And you can do this from any desktop browser that supports HTML5. And if you have enough bandwidth to stream an Amazon Prime video, you can run AppStream without any issues. So this is just one example where you can do things. Uh, I'm not an engineer, so uh, bear with me on this demo. But uh, another example would be like a jet engine. So a customer that is designing jet engines, you can very easily uh, hide the components of it to then see what's inside of it. You can very quickly uh, zoom in and zoom out of it. But just think of the power of being able to carry around this device with you to a meeting. So uh, as a product manager, I'm a people person, so I don't actually work with designing parts and things like this. And, but I'd go to a lot of meetings and have to talk to developers. Or if I were an engineer, I would be going to a lot of meetings to talk about, hey, I'm working on this part. How would I, uh, what does it need to have? I can also do true shading, which is sort of a material science element to this for, uh, and it's rendering right now, uh, to show what it would look like. But I can now carry this with me very portably. Or I can go home. So now, as an engineer, instead of being stuck at my desk, snowpocalypse a few years ago, you had a VPN in. Now I can do this from anywhere. I can do this from home. Uh, and AppStream provides a lot of administrator controls as well. So if you have an engineer who wants to work from home, and you're like, OK, I really don't want you to be able to download any files or data back to your local device, which Siemens actually has enabled on this trial. Uh, you can set admin control so that file download can't come back, or in this case, no file trans uh, transfer whatsoever. So it provides a lot of flexibility and control over uh, what your users do, where your users do it, and how they do it. And so uh, for the last part of uh, the Siemens NX trial, here's a drill. And again, sort of the same thing. I can very easily, if I can find it, there it is, uh, remove the casing of this drill and then see the internals of it but it's a very fluid response. Uh, and it's exactly as though I were sitting in front of my engineering workstation at my desk with a large monitor, and it gives me the performance and fidelity that I would expect from an application like this. So the other demo that I want to do, uh, not that, to showcase is, again, from a Chromebook, what we're seeing a lot, of a lot of enterprise customers do is want to move further and further away from uh, the traditional model of delivering applications. And so with AppStream, customers are now starting to move fully to Chromebooks, but recognizing that they still have Windows applications that they need to deliver for things that they can't migrate off of. So AppStream with the SAML provider lets you basically do just that. So here I have my uh, Google SSO set up, and I can set it up uh, with any SAML 2.0 provider. I just click the application, and then off I go into AppStream. Uh, in this demo, I have SolidWorks running. And so here it's connecting to an instance, which I already have pre-warmed. And here it is. And here's SolidWorks on a Chromebook. But this extends to any number of applications. This isn't required to uh, be specifically like 3D applications or anything along those lines. Uh, it can be for line of business applications, such as SAP GUI, or data modeling and analysis tools, uh, or data for high security access. We see a lot of customers moving their Bastion hosts into AppStream. Uh, App, AppStream enables customers to securely deliver their applications and data to any device uh, their users want to use. If I drop this Chromebook off the stage, which I may, uh, I wouldn't actually lose any data. It all remains secure within the AWS cloud. Thank you. Thanks, Morali. Let me flip you back. There we go. All right, let's sum up briefly. End user computing workloads and VDI solutions in the cloud go better together. It's kind of that chocolate peanut butter moment. Or if you ask our Australian product manager over here, uh, he says Vegemite, but I'm not sure what Vegemite goes with. It's easy to get started or test end, end user computing workloads. There's no big upfront investments. Everything is pay as you go, just like any other AWS service. Many customers start with a straightforward use case like a regional team or compliance need, and then they take, see what makes sense and go from there. AWS end user computing leverages existing AWS services and capabilities to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. So that's key. Finally, AWS is driving innovation for the long term. We are investing in empowering users, simplifying IT, and enabling builders. We see these customer needs, and we're working to help. 
Thanks again for attending. Hope you learned a little bit something about our end user computing solutions. There's a whole bunch of sessions that go diving deeper into these. This being, that, this being a high level overview, these will dive into the, the nitty gritty details. Thanks again for coming, and please complete the survey as you're asking. <laughs>